Hi friends, welcome back. So I'm back again with another encouraging message for you and today's message is called How God Heals. I'm going to get straight into this but I will pray for you at the end of this message. I hope this message is going to bless you and help you to understand um, that God is for you and he wants to heal you. Uh, the first encouraging thing I would like to say is that from the, uh, uh, sorry, from the book of uh, Psalms, 3418 if you have the bible the book of psalms is a lovely lovely book to read um it's very healing so i would highly recommend if you need healing to read the book of psalms now in the book of psalms 3418 it says the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit the lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit that's any person who's brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit and then it says this is who we are, the brokenhearted and crushed in the spirit. This is who we are. That means we're all brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. God knows all his, you know, um, human beings that he's created. They're all brokenhearted and crushed in spirits. It is crushed in spirit. None of us are really whole without God. And God knows this. And he says he's near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit so he is for you he's for me and he loves you very much now i want to talk about how god heals today now the answer to that basic you know basically is uh, there is no formula to how god heals and i'm going to go through some bible verses with you uh, what i find really interesting is when jesus came he actually healed people in different ways and you know he treated people individually with respect you know, um, and and he loves he he lo he came because he loves us so much. You know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, God, the Godhead. You know, God loves us, and he came for this specific reason so that he could basically heal us, restore us, and uh, bring us back to our original position with God. Okay. Right, so I need to stop saying okay because I've noticed in every video I've done, I've got a habit of saying okay, okay. So if I do say okay, please forgive me, okay? Uh, so we see that in the Bible, God treats people individually in their circumstances, uh, but we cannot, as human beings, question how God heals us. I think what happens is most of the time we limit um, God in what he can do for us because we basically try and suss God out like a formula like science wants to know everything but God moves in any way he wants and he can basically do anything that is supernatural he can he can do anything that is beyond our understanding so if we put God in a box unfortunately we will be disappointed and most of the times the reason why we sometimes can't receive healing is because we don't have the faith we don't have the faith why because our understand we try to understand how god would do it and this stops us from receiving what god is trying to do most of the time when jesus healed he said son your faith has healed you daughter your faith has healed you um, and a lot of the times we see in the Bible that a lot of people who came to him were in desperate, sort of dire, dire situation where they were not thinking about how God would heal. They were just looking at Jesus. They were just looking at, you know, um, the answer, which is not how he's going to do it, but looking at Jesus himself. My legs have gone to sleep now. So um, basically, if we just look at how God is going to do it, we will be disappointed. But if we look at the person of Jesus Christ and just put our faith in him and we, um, you know, and we have faith in the person of Jesus Christ, then we will be very surprised at how God answers us. Now, sometimes the way God answers as well, when we um, ask for guidance, when we ask for healing, whether it's, uh, you know, a mental healing, physical healing, you know, God doesn't answer it in the way that you think, okay? Uh, you might say to yourself, nobody loves me, for example. Nobody phones me, uh, you know, why doesn't anybody love me, God? And God might give you an instruction and say, well, you know, why don't you phone somebody? Why don't you make an effort to go out and bake a cake for your neighbor? 
you know his instructions may not come to you like the way you expect because we think that if we say you know um we sometimes treat god like a lottery we say you know um you know god you know nobody loves me we expect some god to drop somebody down from heaven at our door you know here you go boop you know there's somebody to love but you'll find that surprisingly god also in a, in a lot of situations when it comes to healing when it comes to receiving god um doesn't answer the way that we think he answers he answers it in a way where he tries to change the heart as well and increase the faith okay i said okay again so there is no formula to how god heals now i want to go through bible verses with you and talking about how God healed these specific people in the Bible. Now, I just want to tell you that Jesus healed many people. Okay, when he came, he healed so many people. I'm going to keep saying okay all the way throughout this video. He, he healed so many people that the Bible was not is not big enough to hold records of what he's done. But certain people have been mentioned in the Bible. And not just only in the... New Testament, New Testament is when Jesus came, but also in the Old Testament before Jesus came and Jesus still healed them because he is the word of God and through Jesus people got healed. Now before they also had the angels that gave them messages as well, that get, the angels, uh, Gabriel is an angel of, a mess, uh, is a messenger angel. The Bible tells us every time Gabriel was present, he gave a message and there was times where God brought healing uh, you know, uh, through dire situations via an angel, or there were times where God actually spoke, um, you know, through his prophets uh, th with an instruction for people to be healed. And there were other times where God automatically healed. So I'm just going to go through some verses now with you. The first one that I want you to um, turn to is the book of Genesis and Genesis 21, 14 to 19, which is uh, regarding Hagar. Now, for those of you who've never really, um, you know, who've never read the Bible, Hagar was um, basically the maid servant of Sarah, and Sarah was the wife of Abraham, who couldn't, uh, you know, who, who couldn't have any children. And what happened was that um, Hagar ended up having a child, sort of like a, you know, a surrogate mother kind of thing, to, um, you know to have a Sarah's child but through her own womb so what happened is that um, at some point Sarah could conceive in her old age God said to her that you know she's going to have a child but she misinterpreted this and got her own maid to you know to go with her husband so that they could produce a child for Sarah however that isn't what God meant and it brought much enmity between the two uh, two ladies because Sarah was getting uh, a little bit upset with Hagar who was trying to look as if she was a, a bit above her now that she had the baby and what happened is Sarah was trying to send this Hagar away after she Sarah was managed sorry after Sarah managed to conceive herself and have a baby called Isaac what happened is that Sarah didn't want um Hagar the maid servant and her child near her because the promise had to come through Isaac okay where God had promised her through the angels who came and gave the message to Abraham and Sarah so she made a mistake of actually misinterpreting God's word um, through the angels by thinking that she could you know um, sort of like in a humanly way try and get Abraham to Abraham and Hagar to conceive so that she could have a child and that the word of God would come to pass but God actually uh, meant for herself to have a baby and what she did was as a result she got this maid servant to have this child and then she became upset with her because Hagar was trying to you know look as if she's above her because Sarah couldn't have a baby so what she did is she wanted to send them away so in the in Bible verse Genesis 21 14 it says so Abraham got up early next morning prepared food and and a container of water and strapped them to on Hagar's shoulder then he sent her away with their with their son and she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba so basically because as a result of all this that happened um Sarah wanted Hagar to leave and Abraham basically sent her on her way uh, because they couldn't live together now it says when the water was gone um 
from the uh, from the skin obviously that she was carrying she put the boy in the shade of a bush so she had Ishmael with her uh, which was her son with um, Abraham and then um, it says when the water was gone she put the boy in the shade of a bush then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred hundred yards I don't want to watch the boy die she said as she burst into tears but God heard the crying boy and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven Hagar what's wrong do not be afraid. God has heard the boy's crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. The God, then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. So God still cared for Ishmael because he was still the seed of Abraham. Even though Sarah made a mistake and, you know, she basically you know, put this lady into trouble by going into the wilderness on her own with her son, Ishmael, who was also Abraham's son. What it says is God heard the boy's cry. So what that's telling me in terms of God hearing and healing is that when there was no words to speak, when there was nothing for this lady and she was in the wilderness, she thought she was going to die and her son was going to die and she couldn't bear to see her son die. So what she did was that she just, you know, she just moved away and it says that God heard from the tears. Sometimes you and I, we don't have to speak. Yeah. Remember when I said um, in the first, um, in the first verse that I read in Psalms 34, 18 it says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit so when you are when you are going through trials when you are uh, when you need healing mentally physically when you don't know what to do and you don't know obviously if there is a God who's listening to you when you cry your tears will be collected by angels and God will answer you you know um, it's just amazing it's funny I say this because uh, when I met Jesus face to face, I, obviously I've done a testimony of this on YouTube. <clears throat> it was really strange because I, I, I was actually a bit confused and I was crying because I didn't know why, you know, why I was going through what I was going and whatever. And God heard my tears. And I believe that's why I had a vision of Jesus, why he came to me. So very similar to Hagar's situation with me. I didn't know the God of the Bible. I basically, I was tired of my situation. I was tired of the way things were. You know, I obviously had an inclination that God existed, but I just didn't know who the real God was until I said, you know, God, if you're real, show me yourself. But I was also very, very um, fed up with certain things in life. There, you know, we go through so much emotional upheaval, so much stuff that we carry throughout our lives and I just want to encourage you today that you know God hears your tears he, he collects the angels collect your tears but if you want to know him also you know uh, ask what I asked and say you know please show me yourself God you know because he wants to come close to you so he hears you through your prayers as through your tears so the first thing I wanted to say obviously is God hears you without words through your tears he knows when you're broken and he knows that you need help okay so the next one is about a guy called Naaman Naaman is actually um he is a commander of the armies he's kind of like in the battle now this guy has also got leprosy and He's a bit of a stubborn man, we read, and it's in the book of 2 Kings 5, 9 to 14. So Naaman, um, the story of Naaman is in the book of Kings, 2 Kings, not 1 Kings, 2 Kings 5, 9 to 14. And it goes something like this from verse 9. It says, Naaman basically uh, wanted healing and he was he thought he was dying this girl who was a maid servant who worked for his wife said why don't you why doesn't your you know why doesn't you know um my lord go and get healed by one of the 
people, Hebrew people, you know, who is a prophet. And Naaman ended up going to a king and the king tore his clothes saying, Am I, do I look as if I am a messenger of God or I can heal you? So anyway, somehow Elijah, who's a prophet, heard about this and he said, send him to me. Now what happens is Naaman goes to Elijah and it says, so Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elijah's house. But Elijah sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But Naaman became angry and uh, stalked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, Naaman said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. Aren't the rivers of Damascus and Abana and the, I can't pronounce these names, Farpar, better than any of the rivers of Israel? Meaning like, why would he want me to go to the Jordan River to dip myself seven times so that I could be healed? And he was angry with Elisha. He didn't like his instruction. He wanted him to physically come and show manifestations of healing by waving his hand because his understanding of how, how God healed was very limited. So he couldn't understand why he would have to go to the river and take the word that he was, he was given. So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. He got really angry. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet has told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says something as simple as this, go and wash and be cured. <laughs> so Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child and he was healed. He repented, he tells you after that. He went to see Elijah, but Elijah didn't want his gifts. But my point with Naaman is, God tried to heal him through an instruction. He tried to get him out of his understanding that it's not about somebody coming and literally just putting their hands on you and thinking that that's the formula that I'm going to use for healing. God can do heal you without anything. God can heal you through people. God can heal you through your tears. So we see in this instance that God healed Naaman through specific instructions that he wasn't happy with. Why? Because he couldn't understand how God could do that, how God could heal him with just words through a dirty river, as he called it himself. But God wanted to show him that he can do the impossible where his understanding is limited. So we see that he got healed. And then again in the Old Testament, we read... Uh, So we read in the book of uh, 2 Kings again about Hezekiah. Hezekiah again, another leader in uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 20 verse 1 to 6. Okay. So it says about Hezekiah, about the time Hezekiah became uh, deathly ill and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him, he gave the king this message this is what the lord says isaiah said to hezekiah set your affairs in order for you are going to die you will not recover from this fatal illness when hezekiah heard this he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the lord remember O lord how i've always been faithful to you he wasn't dying because he hadn't done anything you know he'd done anything wrong he was dying because he was just not well so he says remember O lord how i've always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly always doing what pleases you then he broke down and wept bitterly but before isaiah had left the middle courtyard the message came to him from the lord go back to hezekiah the leader of my people tell him this is what the Lord the God of your ancestors David says I have heard your prayer and seen your tears I will heal you and three days from now you will get out of the bed and go into the temple of the Lord I will add 15 years to your life 
and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David. Now, what's interesting about Hezekiah is that he became ill. He had a timeline. You know, there's times where uh, we have a timeline. You know, sometimes we can die earlier. Sometimes we could, you know, and I'm not talking about people killing you or, you know, we're talking about there's times where some at times in life where, you know, that death can come upon us. Um, but what it says in this situation with Hezekiah is that he knew who to turn to. He prayed. OK, so his prayer saved him. He knew the God of Israel. He knew that the real God would heal him. So he turned and he says, you know, please don't let me go just yet. And God added 15 years to his life. He gave him more time. So we see again, going back, we see the, in the first instance, God heard the tears of um, Ishmael and Hagar. In the second incident, <clears throat> we hear God gives an instruction to a stubborn man who thought he could be healed by a waving of a hand. Yet God gave him instruction to go and be dipped in the river seven times. And in the third instance with Hezekiah, we see that God uh, restored his health uh, and gave him longer to live through prayer. So he heard his prayer. Now, these were from the Old Testaments. Now we're going to go into the New Testaments. Okay, New Testament. Sorry. So if we look at John, uh, if we look at John five eight, let's have a look. If we look at the John, uh, the book of uh, John, uh, chapter five, verse eight, we're looking at a man who had been basically uh, lame for 38 years and he'd been sort of sat or maybe lied down I'm not sure exactly lied down because he couldn't move because he couldn't move his body and in chapter 5 we read in John 5 we read afterwards Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethsaida with five um, covered porches crowds of sick people blind lame or paralyzed laid on the porches one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years that's a long time he was lying there when Jesus saw him he knew he had been ill for a long time God saw his affliction he knew he'd been ill for a long time he asked him Jesus asked him would you like to get well? Would you like to get well? Then he responded, I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool. So he was sat near the pool, but he couldn't get into it. When the water bubbles up, someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up and walk. Pick your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But as the um, miracles happened during Sabbath day, some of the religious leaders were angry because on Sabbath people were not supposed to be working and they considered anything work. And Jesus obviously was teaching the religious leaders, is it better to heal those who are needy on Sabbath or to, you know, not do anything good? You know, if you lost a sheep on a uh, on a, a if you lost a sheep on a Sabbath, they wouldn't you go and find your sheep. So, you know, a human life is worth a lot more than that. So anyway, the aim of this passage that I wanted, that I read to you is that Jesus saw his affliction. God saw this man's affliction. But what is interesting is this man never prayed to God, never asked. God approached him and saying, do you want to get well? So God says to you today, do you want to get well? Some of you have been living in affliction, have been living with torment of the past. Some of you have been living with pain in your body, but you just haven't asked Jesus to heal you. You haven't asked if there is a God who can heal you so that he can reveal himself to you. Now, in this instant, God is saying to him, ask me and you will receive it ask me. So Jesus healed him by giving him the idea, would you like to be healed? And then he was trying to make an excuse on how he couldn't get into the water. 
And Jesus knew he needed, you know, he needed a miracle because he didn't even know what he was saying. So he says, stand up and walk. And instantly he was healed. And then we look at a different passage in Mark 10. So in Mark 10, 46 to 52, we are looking at a blind man called Bartimaeus. And this is how the, this is how the passage talks about it. And it's uh, Mark 10, 46 to 52. And it says, then they reached Jericho. That was Jesus and his disciples. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many people yelled at him. They were trying to shut him up. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, for those of you who don't know the Bible, Jesus is the son of God. But when he came through Mary, he also came through the line of kings, which is King David as well. That's why Bartimaeus called him son of David. So he shouted more, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped. And he said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up, they said. <laughs> come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, that means teacher, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see and followed Jesus down the road. Now what's interesting about this passage is that the first thing is that this man was crying out for help and people tried to stop him. They didn't see him as anything important. There's times where you and I might feel very little, you know, and we feel that we're not worthy to be in the presence of God, you know, but we want to be. So we're calling out, but people are saying to us, we're not good enough. You know, uh, God is not going to hear you, you know. This is not what God is interested to know about. The people sometimes try and hinder you from coming close to God to pray to him for healing. God cannot heal, you know, just just don't bother asking, you know, S stop, be quiet. Don't don't try and bother Jesus. But we see from this passage that Jesus stopped. He told them to tell this man to come. And that's another thing. Jesus required faith from a blind man to get up and go to him. So Jesus didn't go to the blind man. The blind man went to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus wanted him to have faith that he could do it. So he called him over to come to him. So um, the passage is saying, to, the, what this passage is saying to me is that basically where people tried to stop this man from come, get, receiving his healing, Jesus still stopped for him. The second thing is that Jesus didn't look at his imperfection, his blindness. He still called him to come over through faith. The man walked to Jesus. OK, and you and I can do the same regardless of what situation we're in. Jesus can heal us. Sometimes it requires faith. You might be sick and you might say, I want Jesus to heal me and I can't get out of my sick bed. But God is saying to you, go to church and I will heal you there. Why? Because Jesus says when there's two or more people in my in the congregation, I will be in the midst of them. So sometimes we could be in bed, really sick, maybe even on a Sunday, trying to miss a Sunday service. Or I'm not well. Jesus would require faith from you to go to church. He will heal you there. Seriously. I've seen I've seen myself being healed in church. I've seen, you know, the Holy Spirit is there. That's Jesus in the spirit. So God will heal you. And don't let people stop you from receiving healing, thinking that you're not worthy. You know, you're not good enough. You are. Jesus stops for you. You know, Jesus stopped for the blind Bartimaeus, where people were mocking him. Jesus stopped for him and he called him over. Why? Because he cared for him. Now, there's a lot more than this, but I'm just going to give you one more. And this is in the book of Luke 8, 43 um, 
to 48 and it says it's about a woman with the issue of blood now i've done a bible study on this on my youtube you can always have a look at it because this one is very very um interesting so it you know you get a lot more out of this lady's faith but uh, so if you wanted to watch it, it's uh, called, you know, uh, The Woman with the Issue of Blood on the on my YouTube. Um, now, what it says here is that this lady suffered from blood flowing out of her for 12 years. And she, by faith, she had to go and get healed because she was not ceremonially unclean. And she knew she would be stoned to death. But what this is saying is that a woman in the crowd had suffered from for 12 years with constant bleeding and she could find no cure coming up behind Jesus she touched the fringe of his robe immediately the ble the bleeding stopped who touched me Jesus asked everyone denied it and Peter said master this whole crowd is passing up again pressing up against you but Jesus said somebody deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out of me when the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, I want to tell you something interesting about this. Jesus knew who touched him. Okay. we. I said okay again. Jesus knew who touched him. He wanted her to confess her faith. You see, he wanted people to see that God can do the impossible, which is even if you feel unclean, God can cleanse you. This woman felt really unclean because she was bleeding. And obviously in the Jewish tradition with the constant bleeding, she had no friends. She had no, you know, she had no one to, who could help her heal. She, she literally had to hide herself through the crowd so she wouldn't get stoned to get Jesus to heal her. He knew who touched him. <laughs> he knew who touched him. But what he did is he made her confess so that people could see God could cleanse. God is not afraid of our, you know, dirt. God is not afraid of how dirty we are. He, now, when you come to God... Whatever state you're in, Jesus can clean you. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can make you whole. He can hear you. So don't be afraid. Even if you've got addictions, if you've got, let's say if you're struggling with alcohol or from drugs, don't worry. Keep going to church. You know, it's okay because God is there. He knows that there is an issue that he is um, willing to help you with, but he needs your cooperation in faith to keep going. Okay, now on Sunday when I was in church, I'm in the Connect team in the church and I pray for people and also new people. And there was a gentleman who came and gave his life to Christ. You know, we have to kind of keep watching people when they give, put their hands up if they, if they want to receive Jesus. So we can just go and speak to them at the end. Now this gentleman was crying and crying and crying. And you know he he's uh he he basically told me he has a problem with addiction and he doesn't feel worthy i said i said to him i said you're in a great place you're in a great place and it's okay it's okay to not feel clean it's okay to not feel great but i feel really tearful when i talk about it this was just this sunday gone and i said it's okay <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> It's okay if you don't feel clean. It's okay if you feel like the dirtiest. What matters is that you said yes to Jesus. And when you say yes to Jesus, it might you might feel as if like it might take you time because God is trying to strip away, strip away the things that you've built over the years that have got you into a position of being, uh, you know, um, spiritually attacked and being in bondage. But I said to him that I believe that God is going to use this one day for you to help somebody else who's going through the same thing so i just want to pray for you and i just want to say just going to do a recap but there's a lot more than this god is not just going to answer you through these ways he can answer you in any way he wants he can come to you through a dream and speak to you he can heal you instantly you know even at times where you don't understand it you might think oh wow that was a miracle 
he can heal you because he knows you belong to him. Okay, so so in the first passage, we read that God heard the cry in the second passage that I, I spoke. God gave an instruction to a stubborn man who thought God could only heal through, his, you know, through somebody by their hand. And uh, God basically gave them an instruction and he obeyed it finally. Then we see that God uh, healed a man who prayed to him, who was dying. So God heard his prayer. Then we see that uh, God asks somebody if they want to be healed. So Jesus asked somebody when he was um, walking on earth, do you want to be healed to the man at the pool of Bethsaida? So he reminded him to say, ask God when you need healing. And then we go on to Mark, the, the blind um, Bartimaeus. God is showing us in this passage that people can try and stop you by their lack of faith or by making you feel unworthy. And also God requires your faith by asking you to come forward. So when you're not well, don't just sit in your sick bed. You know, go to go to church, go so that he can heal you. And then in the last passage with the woman with the issue of blood, God basically says nothing is impossible with him. You might feel unclean. You might feel unworthy. You might feel by men that it's a, a punishable cause. But God says to you, you and to me, whatever dirt you're carrying, he can clean it. So don't be ashamed to come to him and confess your faith. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless the person who's watching this. I want to declare healing upon their body, their minds. Lord, I pray that this will be a new day for them, that the things, the former things of life, where they have gone through it and carried it with them through pain, of uh, that they've carried through stress and pain and lack and, uh, you know, relationships being broken. I pray all this, Lord Jesus, by faith to be healed. I pray that forgiveness will come into their hearts, that they will forgive those who've hurt them. And Lord, I pray that you will now cleanse them of all the things that are hindering them from coming even closer to you. And Jesus, by faith, I speak healing, restoration and peace upon the person watching and their family. And I declare for joy to enter into their hearts. And I pray that they will call you and that they will pray to you, that they will seek you. They will not be afraid to cry and pour out their heart to you. Father, I give them to you and I, uh, Lord, plead your hedge of protection over every person who's watching this message today. I declare them healed and whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to come back to you again with another encouraging message. I want to bless you and thank you for watching this. And if you have any need for a prayer, please do, uh, you know, send me um, a message at the bottom of this uh, video. And I will also keep you in my prayer so that we can pray together, okay, for, for your situation. And in regards to my prayer that I would like to ask of you today is I would like to ask you to pray uh, for people who are struggling in this world today. There's a lot of things happening, you know, like uh, the floods in Europe and obviously the war going on in Africa. And obviously there's no peace in the Middle East and for Israel. I like you to Please not just consider your prayers, but also consider other people in your prayer too and ask God to uh, heal them, to restore them and to bless them in any way that, you know, you want to tell him. OK, bless you until next next time. See you and have a lovely week. Bye. For